I can already hear the screaming in the comments. But let me tell you, I know you think I'm making a mistake, but there's one mistake that I can tell you is always a lot worse, and that's not hitting the subscribe button, so definitely subscribe to the video. Anyway, jumping right into it, math, machine learning, I've heard lots of times that if you ever wanna get into machine learning, you need to know the math, it's super important, um, and you can't go without it, and that's a bit of a lie. I'm not sure how many people actually say this, maybe it's just my bias because I've done lots of the math and I'm around lots of those people, but math isn't something you need for machine learning. And the reason why is I think a little bit similar to the reason that programmers or a coder doesn't always need to understand how every single language works, right? They don't need to know um, sort of what statically typed languages are as opposed to dynamically typed. And that's because if you can understand how they work sort of on the highest level, you can usually get enough use out of it to get what you really need, even if you can't go under the hood and make all these little changes. Before we get into sort of the different cases where I think you need a math though and where I don't think you need math, because that's what it really is, it comes down to your specific scenarios and what you'll need for your case. What, what is the math you need for machine learning? A lot of it is statistics. There's also some basic level calculus. I think calculus one and two at most places are probably what you'll need. I, I know some schools have a calculus three, maybe you'll need that. Um, those are the two biggest ones, calculus and, and statistics. And that's on top of sort of the, you know, I'm expecting you know algebra. Um, and probably the last two are linear algebra is immensely useful and multivariable calculus. Those are sort of the big things that people bring up when they talk about knowing the math and machine learning. And while I do admit it does help to know these, they aren't necessary for everything. So the two categories I wanna break up sort of this thing into, or two or four based on how you look at it, is machine learning engineering and research. And surprisingly, in both of these cases, there are certain sort of instances where you might not need the math. So starting off with engineering, you really aren't gonna be looking under the hood at lots of these algorithms lots of the time. As someone that's worked in industry in this, I can say most of the time when someone wants something of you as a machine learning engineer, it's to use a pre-built model and get it working on something like AWS or Google Cloud. You're usually not building models from scratch. What you're usually doing is either using custom training data or even just setting it up can be the whole process. And luckily nowadays, when sort of there's ML is such a huge field now, there's already so many sort of pre-trained models out there or at least sort of structures built for you that lots of the time you never need custom algorithms or not never, but lots of the time you don't need custom algorithms uh, for all sorts of things. There's so many things you can do, especially the popular things like time series estimation or prediction, NLP, lots of like text summarization, uh, using text as input for some other model, you know, uh, getting word embeddings or CV, you know, computer vision, face recognition. If you need to do any of those tasks, you definitely don't need to know the math. Those are all out there pre-built and really all you need to know to get those things going is a bit of programming and a little bit of the high level knowledge. When you are working as a machine learning engineer, lots of the time you can actually treat these sort of objects in machine learning, these models, as just black boxes. And as long as you know the rules that are associated with them and you remember a few rules about when they're good to use and when they're bad to use, you can probably get by just fine. That being said, there is a usefulness to knowing the math. That being said, it is also a lot to learn all the math and I know it gets a lot of people discouraged. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to sh first tell you, you don't need to know it, but there's sort of, I guess, a spectrum of, based on how much math you know, how much you'll be able to work under the hood with these models. Because all the calculations do require a lot of math. And if you do know the, the math that I talked about earlier, you likely will be able to modify models more. You'll be able to create, model, create models of your own and you'll be able to do a whole lot more stuff. Well, I say a whole lot more, you'll be able to essentially do a lot of stuff that you wouldn't other way, otherwise be able to find if it hasn't been pre-created for you already. So that is very helpful, but to be honest, that's usually not what people want you to do as a machine learning engineer. And that's sort of why my take on this is most of the time as a machine learning engineer, the math probably isn't all that important. The second category I wanna talk about is research. And research is actually 
the math is a lot more important and I think a lot of people would probably expect me to say, if you're doing research, you need the math. That's not what I'm gonna say though because that's not actually entirely true. And that's because even when you're doing research, you can break down the research that involves machine learning into several categories. There, is, there, or there are cases where you do need the math. One example is you know, just machine learning theory. If you're doing any machine learning theory, you do need the math, sorry to break it to you. It's, it's essential. Uh, if, if you wanna write any paper that gets accepted, you're going to need to usually prove that there's a mathematical foundation for what you're doing. Because if you can't, people are gonna say, well, how'd you get here? Why does it work? And they're gonna have all these questions and being able to provide mathematical proofs or mathematical backing, um, or at least being, being able to relate your sort of new model to this other model that works uh, will help a lot in terms of proving that it has some desirable properties like I don't know convergence is a thing you hear a lot of machine learning um, or it helps you sort of lots of the time it's it's the math of why things or math is or rather the math is the language lots of the time of why these models work and that being said it's not the whole picture and often you can get a lot of results without knowing the math so the cases where you don't need to know the math if you're doing machine learning research is primarily when you're focus of your research is not on machine learning, but rather it's used as a tool to get the results you need. So application is a big case for this. Maybe you're doing human computer interaction research and you want to use an AI to see how this human interacts with the AI, right? Maybe the details of this agent don't matter too much for you. What you really matter for is what results you get back. And if you submit a paper to an HCI conference, they're gonna be looking a lot more at the HCI part of it than the machine learning part of it. So that's a case where you might not need this. And that really applies, I think, across the field. I know lots of people in HCI that use NLP models, natural language processing, for their HCI research. And you know, you're not gonna expect them to give all these proofs in their papers about why the model works. They just care about you know, H the HCI part of it because that, that's the research they're focusing on. I, I could give more examples, um, but I, I think the general rule of thumb for me has been, if you're doing research where the focus is machine learning or some sort of AI, you're gonna have a hard time without the math, not to mention like even if you don't need it in your own paper, you need to understand other papers and you're probably not gonna be able to do that unless you have the mathematical vocabulary that's required to read these papers because usually the level is set pretty high. Whereas if you're reading papers or making papers on HCI or I, I should really think of another example, what's another field like security, um, where sometimes these types of models can be used, um, maybe security a little bit less, so they're not used all that much, um, but maybe like optimization, no, uh, you, you do need to know math for that because that's a mathematical field. There, there are other cases, maybe not coming to mind right now, but when you're involved more in just application, you know, the other papers aren't gonna have all these math and the, the results are really focused on the non-machine learning part of it, so it's not super impactful. So I think those are the four cases where you need and don't need machine learning, uh, or sorry, not machine learning, where you don't need and don't need math. Um, so there's software engineering for building new models and sort of just using already existing models and putting them into production. And then there's research for ML specific research and ML application research. So I think that th those are the big categories. That being said, um, the sort of way I wanna end off this video or round it off is by talking about how you, can, how you can learn the math if you want to, because you don't need to learn all the math before you jump into machine learning. If you don't know all the math, there will be some papers that you sort of can't read until you maybe get to that level, or maybe you'll be able to understand bits and pieces, but you won't be able to understand sort of the whole um, of the paper until you get to a certain level. But what I highly recommend is, unless you love the math, in which case go for it, but if, if you're doing it a bit begrudgingly, you can kind of do it as you go. You know, don't make it so that you have to get through every single thing. Don't make it so that you have to get through linear algebra, through multivariable calculus, all these things before you even start touching the machine learning, if that's what you're interested in. Feel free to start on the things that don't require math, using models that already exist, um, implementing non-mathematically heavy models, um, maybe not a ton of those, but there certainly are things you can do. I know for me, I've, you know, a little secret, I never actually took multivariable calculus, but I've learned enough just through reading papers um, and based on all the other math I know, right, the linear algebra and the normal calculus, um, seeing those and then looking at enough papers and, and watching a few YouTube videos, I've kind of gotten up to speed for what I need. I'll probably end up honestly going into it more in the future just to make sure I have a strong basis. 
But for now, I've gotten by just fine. That's obviously different from someone that knows no math at all. But I, I feel like I'm going on a bit of a tangent now, so I'll call it here. But yeah, th that's my opinion. I don't think you always need the math for reinforcement, or sorry, I do reinforcement learning too much. It's just coming out now. You don't always need the math for machine learning, but it certainly can be helpful in a lot of cases. That, that's my opinion. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to the certain situation. Anyway, if you like this video, you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, smash it hard, smash it good. It, it means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. I hope to catch you guys next time. That's all. See you next time.